This is Dr. Mimi Lam from Metro Health Medical Center, and I would like to help you become acquainted with the many faces of acute kidney injury. Let's start with a definition. Acute kidney injury, sometimes referred to as acute renal failure, is defined as an abrupt decrease in renal function occurring over hours to days, resulting in loss of the kidney's ability to excrete waste products and to maintain fluid and electrolyte balance. It's detected as a rise in BUN and or serum creatinine and or a decrease in urine output. Here are some common causes of AKI. Although they are distinct clinical and histologic entities, they can all lead to the same final common endpoint of an acutely elevated BUN and creatinine. The majority of cases of AKI are going to fall into these first two categories, prerenal azotemia and acute tubular necrosis that is hemodynamically or toxin-mediated. But remember that there are other causes, and unless you think of them, you may miss the diagnosis. So let's do a quick overview of them. Prerenal azotemia is not really kidney injury or renal failure. Here the kidneys are normal and are just reacting to an extra-renal situation such as increased urea production or volume depletion, and they're doing their best to protect intravascular volume by avidly reabsorbing sodium and water while still excreting wastes as well as they can. In ATN, tubular cells have died from ischemic or toxic injury, dropped off of the basement membrane, and been excreted in the urine. So compared with normal, you don't see much in the way of nuclei or cells until the cells regrow. By contrast, in acute interstitial nephritis, caused for instance by drugs or infection, you see an intense inflammatory infiltrate that attacks the interstitium and obscures the renal architecture, and the tubular cells die as a result of inflammatory injury. With crescentic GN, a normal glomerulus is squeezed out by the formation of a multilayered crescent inside Bowman's capsule. This can be associated with linear anti-glomerular basement membrane antibodies in diseases such as good pastures. An inflammatory GN, such as with lupus, can rapidly damage glomeruli and tubules with immune complexes and inflammatory mediators, leading to cell proliferation, interstitial inflammation, and eventually irreversible scarring. In obstructive nephropathy, blockage of urine flow can occur anywhere from the ureters on down to the bladder, prostate, or urethra, resulting in hydronephrosis or dilation of the collecting system. Eventually, the back pressure can cause glomerular filtration to cease and renal tissue to be injured. Obstruction can also occur at the microscopic level with the renal tubules being blocked by crystals of drugs such as indinavir or by proteinaceous casts made up of monoclonal proteins formed in multiple myeloma. Vascular causes of AKI include atheroembolic disease with obstruction of vessels by cholesterol-containing thrombi formed from broken-off pieces of atherosclerotic plaques. Another vascular disorder is malignant hypertension with damage to vessels from high arterial pressures resulting in intimal proliferation the so-called onion skinning, and luminal blockage by platelet fibrin thrombi. So how do you tell which is the cause in your patient? You have to apply your clinical skills and gather information from sources such as history, physical exam, lab studies, imaging, and sometimes even a renal biopsy. So in summary, a variety of clinical disorders can present with the picture of acute kidney injury. Careful detective work and putting everything together can lead to a correct diagnosis and an appropriate plan of management.